The highlights of today's talk really were sort of emphasising the way that we are going to revolutionise genetic diagnosis for patients. And I'm going to start with the basics. So what is genetic eye disease? Well, it's a disease that arises when we have a change in our genetic code within our DNA. And this can involve one or more genes or part of our chromosomes. It can be inherited from our parents, but it can also arise in an individual patient. And it can be passed on to future generations. We currently can diagnose about 25% of patients. So we have 75% of patients left to discover the genes that may be causing their conditions. The rarer pure genetic eye diseases actually contribute together a large burden. They contribute to about 60% of blindness amongst infants worldwide. And inherited retinal diseases are the leading cause of certifiable blindness amongst our working age adults in the UK. The second highlight is um, trying to teach people about how the process works to discover and develop a treatment for genetic eye conditions. Genomic medicine is going to be integrated into routine NHS clinical care in the next three to five years, if not, if not sooner. It will give us the ability to develop new treatments, effective treatments for cancer, to diagnose conditions which are rare, to screen individuals, and it may be at birth where we can test for rare genetic disorders like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, retinitis pigmentosa, but also for individuals like you who may make a point of contact at a hospital and be screened for risk factors like breast cancer. And then we can give you personalized preventative medicine. We're also entering the era of precision medicine. We know that currently, around 30 to 60% of the drugs that we prescribe to patients are ineffective. Globally, we are wasting $300 billion on drugs that don't work. We can now look at our genomes, identify genes that code for enzymes that help drugs work better or stop them from functioning, and we can give you the drugs that will work for you and are safer for you. The key part of the research that I've undertaken is really developing a treatment for patients who suffer from a particular type of mutation in their genes, something called a stop mutation. Um, and this introduces this abnormal stop signal in our genes um, and it prevents normal full length functioning protein being formed. Now, many years ago, uh, we identified a class of drugs, actually they were antibiotics, um, that were used to treat normal infections in patients but had a, had a different type of mechanism whereby it could override these stop signals. Um, and so we tested these on initially zebrafish which actually had similar um, conditions to humans. So I tested them on a zebrafish model of ocular coloboma where the zebrafish has a cleft in its eye similar to patients um, and also choroideremia which is a retinal degeneration. Um, and I found that actually these drugs worked really well. And actually these types of abnormal stop signals contribute to about 70% of genetic disease as a whole. So if we could find a treatment that targets that particular type of stop signal, we may be able to treat a, a huge amount of patients with various conditions caused by various different genes. So we couldn't translate those drugs to patients because they were too toxic. So they actually cause hearing and kidney problems. So we actually had to then find new drugs that were much more safer, but still had that ability to change a, a stop into a go signal. And we've now done that with a drug called Atalurin. Um, and we've tested this drug on our zebrafish and it's shown astounding results, even better than that old class of antibiotics. Um, it can now actually prevent the onset of the retinal degeneration and in early development it can ha actually help the eyeball fuse, so preventing ocular coloboma from forming. Um, and so based on that, um, we've now applied that treatment to human cells and we are now in the next 12 to 18 months moving to clinical trials with this drug for our patients. 
And I'm pleased to say we're currently undertaking two natural history studies now on choroideremia and a condition called Usher's syndrome, which is the most common cause of deaf blindness in patients where children are born deaf and they, they develop a retinal degeneration in their early teens um, and into their 20s. We're trying to understand how the disease progresses, when's the best time to treat, and to see if we can map some sort of progression over a 12-month period. And then following on from that, if it's successful, this, this would be a phase two trial. We would then move to a phase three trial where we would include loads of people as a multi-centre international trial um, and potentially start to apply these drugs to other eye conditions that are also caused by these um, abnormal stop signals in our genes. So that includes other genetic diseases like Stargardt's, Usher's, retinitis pigmentosa, um, even some corneal dystrophies, that may, any, any condition that may be caused by this abnormal stop signal. And then following on from that, if successful, we would then um, start to um, go through the various approvals such as NICE, and actually NICE have given that particular drug, atelurin, approval for use in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy now for those patients because they suffer from a, a condition which is caused by the same type of mutation. Um, and so once you've got NICE approval, you can then get funding to actually start treating patients on the NHS.